Hello and welcome back. Today on the bench we have a Colt model 1911A1 that is connected to a combination shoulder stock holster. And uh, anyway, these were primarily manufactured for the Browning High Power. Now these were made by the John Inglis Company of Canada and they were under contract during World War II 1944 to 45 to make the Browning High Power for the Chinese and when they did that they made approximately 29,000 of these shoulder stock holster combinations of which about a thousand of them ended up being surplus and we believe at that point in time they were mated to these 1911A1s although that could be incorrect we don't know at this point in time but anyway um, we're gonna go ahead and take this part and take a quick look at it we'll start by looking at the pistol and what we have here is a of course a 1942 production uh, model 1911A1 and this was a Canadian owned pistol and you can see the uh, Canadian mark here and then we have the uh, Ordnance Inspector, the WB here, and then we have the Canadian mark again with a broad arrow. And uh, the WB is for Colonel Waldemar S. Brodberg, and he was the Hartford Springfield, the Hartford Springfield Ordnance District Inspector from July 1st of 41 through June 16th of 42. So that's a close look at the pistol. Oh yeah, while I'm here we'll take a look at this milled out um, mainspring housing here. You can see there's grooves in here. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if I can get enough light in there for you. And uh, anyway, grooved in here. There's a piece for it to lock it into place. And then we can just see into the mainspring housing here. And uh, anyway, that's that's the pistol. Now we'll go ahead and take a uh, closer look at the shoulder stock holster combination. Now these were made by S A Limited, which is Small Arms Limited. Let's see if I can get a reflection on this so you can read the stamp. And uh, Small Arms Limited was contracted to do all the woodworking. Here you can see 1944. And um, John Inglis Company didn't have the uh, manufacturing abilities to do the woodworking. They made all the metal parts and uh, made a pretty cool little shoulder stock holster combination. Now we'll go ahead and open this up, take a look at it. You can see the little uh, release button here. And then there's piece in here that acts as a tensioner to keep the pistol firm in there from rattling around. Nice little hinge on here. You can see here's the uh, release for it and then you can see down into it. Now I don't want to put the other one in this. I'll just go ahead and give you an idea of what it looked like. Here, This here is my shooter. I like to take out to the range occasionally and uh, I'll do a video on what makes this shooter but anyway you can see how this sticks out you can see pictures of these combinations with the Browning high power and uh, anyhow um, the 1911A1 fitted up with that looks pretty cool and then we'll go ahead and over here we have the piece to Put it on your belt loop. Here we have again uh, the Canadian broad arrow and then the company which I am not sure ZLNT Limited which would have made this strap here. Anyway the way this works is this just attaches on here and then you can hang it from your belt of course and we'll go ahead and take it back apart and we'll go ahead and put it back on its pistol. Now this must have been a nice little combination. Once again these little shoulder stock pistol combinations uh, worked 
decent. This is hard to get up to where you could probably sight it. Um, you know, I, I don't know how well this particular model would have worked, but anyhow, there you go. And uh, another interesting note about the John Inglis company was it, um, after World War II, the company began producing like fishing tackle, house trailers, pots and pans, lighters, domestic heaters, stoves, things of those nature. And um, many of those products were sold under the Kenmore name. So if you're familiar with Sears, um, the English company uh, started making stuff licensed under this uh, Kenmore name and later became a Whirlpool Canada. So there you go. Uh, that company survives today under a different name. Uh, a little bit of history, like so many of the manufacturers we see today made a lot of ordnance for World War II. So there you go, another interesting piece of Colt automatic history. And uh, thanks for tuning in and watching. Hope you enjoyed this short video showing the Inglis wood stock shoulder holster whatever combination. <laughs> and uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in and watching. Have a great day.